Uh, but four days of uh, March Madness, and it lived up to it. Favorites move on. First time in a while that we've had uh, all the ones and two seeds made it. I really thought, like, about the two to three seed, it wouldn't matter between that and, like, 12 or 14. Didn't really pan out, but uh, so committee, plenty of reasons to bash them. They did a pretty good job seeding the top teams. A lot of impressive performances, but a lot of good upsets. Crazy shots, buzzer beaters, unexpected results, uh, humiliating defeats, all the things we want. Crying band members, <laughs> absurdities, uh, folk heroes. I heard that Yale was too cheap to bring their band to Spokane. They, they've got the University of Idaho to be their band. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Ma, I got into Yale. <laughs> Yeah, you're yeah, you're a general studies dude at Idaho, but you're repping Yale for the weekend. I, I was go. in that. I was in the Yale band, yeah. and they go, "Would you went to Yale? Well, riddle me this: How would I not have gone if I'm in the band? <laughs> you're hired. A lot of stuff happened. Oh, a lot. Let's start with this bonkers game. We'll kind of just go through winners, some winners and some losers here. We'll keep it keep it casual, but. This uh, Houston Texas A and M game that ended the the weekend smorgasbord on Sunday night was uh, as crazy as they get. Great game, in state rivalry game. I'm sure they got huge ratings in the state of Texas. Um, Houston always solid all year. Gives up an 11 point. Really, they didn't give it up. A and M just rallied. A and M got it done. Final two minutes to force overtime. And foul all of the Houston Cougars out of the game, basically, including the amazing Jamal Shedd. The Aggies, uh, Anderson Garcia hits a three at the buzzer. That isn't his thing. Uh, and then we end up with a uh, a walk on for Houston named Ryan Elvin, who hadn't played, had played like, I don't know, like 20 minutes the whole year. He was three for four from the free throw line for the season. And he has to hit one <laughs> to stay by <laughs> with the Sweet 16 on the line. And he gets one of two and gets it done. Um, one of the more bonker games I've ever seen. Pat, your thoughts on that one or anything else you you got, but that one and, and the and the Houston Cougars moving on. Yeah, that was like that was beyond belief on so many different levels. For one, like I could not believe Houston of all teams coughed that thing up because they are so solid. Uh, but yes, to A&M's credit, A&M did a great job taking it and making them cough it up. If, it got, if A&M could make some free throws, they would have won the game. But A&M got five shots on the last possession. They got it down to a point where it was a three-point game somehow. I don't know how, but they did. And... Miss, get a rebound, miss, out of bounds, or jump ball, get the ball back, miss, get a rebound, miss, possession to AM, and then the, the out of bounds play for the tying shot. Tyrese Radford inbounded the ball and basically threw a sinker pitch, kind of like a sidearm sinker inbounds pass. It bounced one time at knee level. Anders Sargent Garcia grabs it with the second left, picks it up, shoots it, falls down, and is on his back at the time that he ties the game. And at that point, four of Houston's starters had fouled out, including Jamal Shedd, who is the everything for them, but also LJ Shedd Cryer. Shedd was still there for a while of the, the Oh, that's, the no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Shedd Key. did not foul out till overtime. You're yeah. right. You're right. But anyway, they like you're going into overtime right there. As you're Houston. You are in complete shock. You cannot believe you have given this up, and you've got three of your guys have fouled out, and they somehow rallied. Uh, in OT to to win the game. And that Shed just put him on his back and said, look, I clear it. I'll go one on one on however many I need to go on. And probably they should have run more defenders at him. But he made shots. He passed the guys for shots. Uh, just a superhuman performance. And again, yes, yeah, so Ryan Elvin, uh, basically he's he's like the guy that gets in for two minutes at the end of blowouts. Uh, he's a senior. He's a walk-on. He's never done really much of anything. He's against a bowl crawfish, lady. apparently. 
what? Apparently, boiled crawfish. There's a apparently the first Google search image search that comes up of or one of the first ones that comes up is him uh, standing over a boiling pot of crawfish with a massive <laughs> paddle in it. That's my guy right there. Okay. Well. <laughs> That Good and ca- a career high nine points against Our Lady of the Lake in 2021. Um, no, he's done nothing. He steps up there like I can't imagine what he's feeling with your number one seed, all everything that's on the line, and he misses the first one. He has to make the second one, basically, and he did. Just a wild, epic game. What was the score when he like? What, what was the situation? Because remember, uh, as I told you guys off air, when A uh, and M or when Houston was leading by ten with two minutes left, I uh, dozed off. Uh, so I missed the whole, yeah, all of <laughs> this the fireworks. Part. The it was fireworks. a three so, point what, game. Yeah, it was okay. a three point yeah. game. So mm-hmm. he kind of needed to ice it, but yeah. I mean, it yeah. was just shed was out. Yeah. Uh, the other three, like right, they had they, no ball handlers. They had no yeah. ball handlers left yeah. in the game. They did not know how to pass the ball in. They throw it there <laughs> to him, and they get it. And it's like if A and M can get this to overtime, they're going to win by like twelve. Yeah, like it, it, Houston is cooked. They got nothing. And I, one other thing, end of regulation. It was a they, they called a jump ball, mm. uh, mm-hmm. or a or a whatever possession arrow, oh, whatever they call it. Oh, First, yeah. I hate the possession arrow. Um, yeah. Cue my Dicky V. Screaming about the possession arrow. He's been screaming about it for 40 years, but they're not changing it. Um, the possession arrow, if, if they don't call the first of it was a quick possession arrow. I didn't think it was a, a tie up at all. I thought it was Houston ball. But right. by calling it a possession arrow, they stopped the clock. The rest stopped the clock for Houston to be able to run the play. Mm. If they had just let the continuation go, there's no way Houston gets a shot off. Right. So yeah. the ref call on that was literally now the kid made incredible pass, incredible shot, mm-hmm. whatever. It all went out, but there were many bad calls this weekend. <laughs> um, but that one was uh that was it was what a I mean, that was just insane. That was just an insane yeah. game. Yeah. And that's one thing we you know, we've had a lot of excitement, obviously, but to have a true but I think that was the first true buzzer beater of the tournament was Anderson Garcia's shot. Yeah. I don't think we had a a true one. It didn't walk it off because it sent it to OT, but we had one. I I was there when Colorado made one with like 1.7 left or something, but that was the first one where the ball is in the air at the buzzer. Very exciting. Yeah, college teams like to shoot with a little bit of time left to either get the rebound or, I don't know, the pros, they're, you know, if they got a tie game, the pros are just, going with they want they want the curry shot to hit the buzzer while it's in the air mm. they hit more goes shots in or in the yeah, yeah. They're, they're more likely to hit the shot not clank it off and some wild scramble and yeah some uh some uh walk on who you know they brought in to keep the gpa high uh you know is standing there under the hoop going wait what and he puts it in terrific uh terrific game who else you got who else do we have as a it impressed you this weekend um we talked. I, let me say this: We talked last week about some coaches that needed victory, like needed a big weekend. Uh, three of them advanced: uh, Matt Painter, um, Purdue, Purdue, Tennessee, and 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 uh, Duke. So they're all doing mm, pretty yeah. well. Um, yep. I thought it was impress, particularly impressive for, or maybe therapeutic for Purdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they look really good, and they they played really well. And they need the boilers. I've never seen a one seed celebrate a six victory over 16 <laughs> quite like Purdue did. Yeah, uh, I was there for the in Indy for the Purdue games. And I think the first one was cathartic. And the second one was like, all right, look out, we're coming. You know, like mm. they got that Godzilla off their back, you know, destroyed Grambling. That that was what it was. But then Utah State is a pretty good team. And they won 27 games. And Purdue just absolutely destroyed them. And Zach Eady bends the game in a way nobody else does in college basketball because he's so giant. And Purdue just uses every inch of him and that and that advantage. You know, it's painters a little bit like Bill Self, where if I have a dominant big guy, guess what? We're throwing it in every possession, and you're gonna have to deal with it. And eventually they'll run into some teams that might be able to deal with it. But until then. Everything goes through Edie, and he's going to play physical, and people are going to fly off of him, and they're going to the foul. The fouls are unbelievable. Like every time Purdue plays, their foul advantage is massive, and it's driving people crazy. And that's going to be a real talking point, I think, in the Sweet Sixteen. Is Purdue shoots you know nine million more free throws than their opponents, 
And it's because of Zach Eady, because he just dominates inside and teams just they they foul him or they bounce off of him. Those are your two choices, basically. So it's kind of fascinating to see. It's a very old school approach. Purdue dictates the terms of every game that they play as long as he's in there. A lot of uh, we're talking about uh, Purdue, you know, blowouts, a, lo- a lot of blowouts from the ones and tunes, a lot of chalk. We talked about it earlier, like uh, one double digit seed made it into the. This, the uh, second weekend, NC State, 11 seed, and then you have Clemson as a six. But outside of that, right, we all have all one, two, three, four, and fives. Uh, yeah. So as wild as the college basketball season was, right, we, and we talked about it a lot. Pat's talked about how crazy and unpredictable it is. This is the I think I saw this as the, maybe the second most chalkiest, you know, in the last decade or so as far as the average seeds uh, making it to the second weekend. I think it's 3.3. Um, in the average over the last, whatever, 10 or 15 years is more like 4.3. Uh, so it's uh, chalky in here, Dan. Very chalky. I think it's, I think the only difference, and I don't have a stats on this, but like it's, it's chalky, but they're different teams that are the favorites mm. than traditionally. Yeah. Like Kansas yeah. isn't in it, Kentucky isn't in it, Michigan Kansas, State isn't in it, Indiana's not in it, UCLA is not in it, Louisville's not in it. You know, a lot of teams that uh, traditionally have been, uh, other powerhouses aren't in it uh, or didn't make it. Um, but yes, it's, I thought the, the committee did a good job with the seating. Uh, they, sh- you know, they did other things wrong. Namely should have let more big, big East teams. Big in. East, right. Um, I think that's, that's a fair criticism of them. Uh, the big East looked really good. I, you know, you're, you were watching this thing and then you're kind of looking at the Yukon score, which like they seem to start every game, 10 zip, seven yeah. zip. Um, and you're like, are we just are we just messing around? Like some of those college football seasons when Alabama was just like, we're just playing for second here. What are we doing? Like, is anybody? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. The gymnasts talk about that when Simone Biles is in a meet. They're all silver is gold. They just <laughs> they just go, eh, you know, um, beat all the other people. You feel good, um, you know. So I think that'll be interesting. Uh, can't not mention Oakland. You. We'll get to the Kentucky mm. side later. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Golke, uh and his ten three pointers, and then embracing his the jokes that he's basically a, a regional manager for Enterprise Rent a Car and <laughs> sure. the D two transfer with and uh, Oakland was great. That was probably uh, one, maybe the most exciting of the first four days. Like it's prime time CBS. I think it was the highest rated game of the uh, mm-hmm. of the weekend. Um, Trey Townsend is a great player for Oakland and Greg Campy's a great story. And then Kentucky makes, um, you know, the perfect March madness, quote unquote, villain to root against. Um, and, you know, just watching Jack, uh, uh Gelke just, uh, cook, uh, these Kentucky lottery picks or whatever they got, uh, is, is, is pretty hysterical. Wait, uh, was- Oakland was involved in the most watched game of the, uh, of the first round, uh, so, Dan, are you saying that um, people actually like to see mid-major little guys? No, no, guys, it's because uh, there was compete? an SEC team in it, uh, Ross. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was all the people were watching Kentucky, and then people were like, what that's is right. this? We don't care. Yeah. 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 yeah th- that's right. Let's, it was let's, tough let's weekend. just say uh, tough it was weekend not a good for, weekend for mm. the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, who was, mm. you know, opined a bit about. Maybe maybe we'd have too many uh, automatic qualifiers who are not among the elite teams. Oakland and Yale did some damage to his league, uh, significant damage. And, uh, yeah, the SEC in general, just just a brutal, brutal showing. But, yeah, they, 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 the Oakland thing was just fantastic to watch. I mean, you know, and that's the thing about Campy's teams always, Dan, you know this, is they, they are always a really good offensive team. You know, they're skilled and they're going to score and they can, they don't mind playing fast and they're not afraid when they get into the tournament. But <laughs> the goalkeeper thing, it was like, wait a minute. The guy with these, the receding hairline guy is going to yeah. 32 <laughs> and shoot 23s. I was oh, talking yeah. to, I was talking to Shaka Smart, um, you know, about long story short, but anyway, why shooters shoot so much in warmups when they're already good. And he goes, you know, you, you know, even the good shooters, you're probably going to get four or five three point attempts, unless you're the guy from Oakland who shot twenty, yeah. twenty attempts from three. Uh, it's just, just classic. Chucker. Yes, absolute chucker. And somehow Kentucky 
failed to contest him. My wife uh, saw him on the screen. I mean, she doesn't watch a lot of sports. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they, 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 uh, the immediate reaction was, as you'd expect, he looks like he's 35. <laughs> <laughs> he might be. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hillsdale College. Hillsdale College transfer. Um, you know, Oakland's got a robust NIL program. Like, I don't, oh, yeah. 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 You know, uh, but he signed some deals. He had like a Buffalo Wild Wing deals and something else real quick, which is always great. Like, even if it, even if yeah. it was only him and his roommates get free chicken wings the rest of the yeah. year, so that's what? a win. That's a win. Mm-hmm. 